everyone. Welcome back to the show. We're cruising around in the 2019 Honda Insight. And I got to tell you, this car has style and miles. It gets 55 miles per gallon in the city, making it a beautiful and efficient ride. Hi, I'm Jeff Welser. I'm the lab director here at IBM Research in Almaden. We've been in this beautiful location since 1986. Come on in, let me show you around. IBM Research Almaden actually started here in 1952. Uh, we kind of grew up with Silicon Valley. At that time, we were working on uh, disk drives and storage. We made the world's first disk drive ever here. But now we spend most of our time really focused on artificial intelligence and AI and figuring out ways to advance those technologies. IBM Research Almaden is part of our global research division. We have actually 12 labs globally. Our headquarters is back in Yorktown Heights, New York, just north of New York City. We have 3,000 researchers working across these labs and everything from hardware to software to AI algorithms. So we've really gotten to the point where we can do what we call narrow AI very well. That is, we can use computers to identify patterns in language and images much better than we could in the past. What we're all about now is advancing that to go to what we call broad AI where we take these sort of individual things and actually incorporate them into a workflow that will help people do their jobs. So this is a room we like to call our brain lab. Uh, here we're doing research on different types of hardware, new chips to run artificial intelligence or AI programs more efficiently. You know, right now you tend to run them in giant data centers, but you'd like to be able to run them on, on individual objects or build up really big neural nets with less power. So we, we designed a chip that can run at very low power and run these algorithms. We've actually designed large systems around them as well. But mostly it's about experimenting on ways to continue to scale AI bigger and bigger. It's really an exciting time right now in AI. Over the past year, we've spent a lot of time kind of in three areas. One is just scaling AI, figuring out ways we can uh, run it more efficiently on hardware or new algorithms we can run. But probably one of our main focuses over the last year has also been on trusting AI. It's a lot of concern about making sure AI is not biased. So we put out some tools for the development community that can help them ensure when they're training a system that it doesn't get biased in it inadvertently. And lastly, making sure it's actually explainable. So when an AI gives you an answer, you can know why it made that decision. I am the director for IBM's Accessibility Research, and I would say that we have the best job in IBM because our role is to apply the latest technology and especially AI these days to help people with disabilities. So let me share with you, you know, two really cool projects that um, you know, we are working on right now. And one is a mobile app. Voice command. Welcome to sample server. You can select destination from auditorium, toilet, and entrance. Where do you want to go? Auditorium. It's powered by AI. It's an indoor navigation for the blind people. People coming to this building can be intimidating, but this mobile app will guide them to different places. And then second one is called a Content Clarifier, which uses natural language processing, machine learning, and IBM's Watson technology to make reading, writing, and comprehending content much easier for people with learning disabilities. So one of the challenges for uh, students with autism, sometimes they don't know the tone. So when they write, we try to help them to understand the kind of tone they put in writing. Obviously, there are many applications for AI in the business world or in our consumer products. We're also looking at ways you might apply it that are a little bit different that might actually be more societally beneficial as well. Here we are outside one of our many research labs where our researchers are using AI to help people and the planet. So here in this lab, we build microscopes powered with artificial intelligence to study plankton. Plankton are the bottom of the food chain. Don't let their small size fool you because they provide up to two-thirds of the oxygen we breathe. What we're interested in doing is putting these microscopes in the field, in waterways, in oceans, to monitor the health of the plankton. And usually you'd have to have a biologist looking at the results of these, but if you put thousands of them out, you can't have thousands of biologists hanging out with these microscopes. So the AI is basically uh, like a little biologist inside the microscope looking at the plankton. And they're looking for anomalies when things get the shape changes or the behavior changes. We want to alert scientists because that usually indicates there's a problem about to happen. 
So looking forward, if I look into 2019, we have a few areas that we think are really going to be important in terms of AI and, and, and where it's going to advance to. One is causality. So right now, AI is good at figuring out if two things are correlated or occur together, but you don't necessarily know which caused which. The other area, though, is trusting it even more. I think it's going to go from being uh, sort of a, something you think about at the end to something you think about from the, in the very beginning, making sure you're designing a system from the beginning and the bottom up. And lastly, more speculatively, we're looking at how you might apply something like quantum computing to AI. Quantum computing is a whole different way of doing computation. It's just beginning, but we see some exciting possibilities for applying it into the artificial intelligence realm. I have to say being director of this lab is one of the most exciting jobs I can imagine. I have people in the basement who literally move individual atoms around to try to create new materials, and I have people out there who are using AI to solve some of the world's biggest problems. And to be able to come in every day to that kind of environment is just fantastic.